Welcome to uh, Saudi Society Clinical Chemistry Podcast. I'm uh, Dr. Abdullah Mshari uh, um, from here, from Dubai, and IFCC conference. Uh, really, we have uh, uh, our pleasure to uh, interview with um, uh, Mr. San Diego uh, Faris Taha. He's from Argentina, and he's the chair of IFCC Young Scientist um, First uh, Task Force. Yes, it's a yeah. task force. Exactly. exactly. Uh, so we are glad to see you. Thank and you for the invitation. It's a pleasure and honor for me being with you today. And I hope I can show a little bit of our task here in as, as a young scientist in the FCC. Nice. Uh, can we know in the, in the first of uh, this interview about the aim of young scientists? What's the aim? What, what's the objective? Of course, yes, sure. Look, the um, the task force was created initially uh, with the aim of making sure that the young scientists make a significant and growing contribution to the IFCC activities um, and also to show uh, the significant uh, role of the laboratory medicine uh, around the world. Um, this objective they changed during the years. This task force was created in 2010, more or less, with Daniel Gousson, who was the first chair of the group. And these objectives, of course, they change since and everything is changing in the world. Great. So nowadays, we also want to make sure that we provide all the young scientists with the, with the tools that they need to improve and increase their training to make sure that we have uh, the best leaders of tomorrow uh, in our society, in our, yeah. in our laboratories. Nice. Uh, Mr. San Diego, we see a positive energy today from the young scientists. Uh, can we know more about uh, these young scientists? Uh, how many of them, the members, the structure of young scientists? Okay, yes, sure. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to talk about the difficult question is what is a young scientist? No? Because uh, what is the age limit to be a young scientist to participate in this kind of groups? So we know that usually, or depending on the country, you, we have a young scientists or like professionals that graduate maybe at 24, 25, 26, depending on the country. Uh, so we put the age limit at 40 years. So we, you should be less than 40 years to be called a young scientist, especially to apply to some of our programs like I will, call, I will tell a little bit later. Um, the structure of the Young Scientist Task Force uh, of ICC, we are six core members. I am the chair of the group, with plus five more uh, core members. We represent all the regions of FCC, uh, or we try to do this, so we, we have young scientists from every from different countries. And also we have, we're the, the largest group of FCC, we have 44 uh, corresponding members from mostly 550 different countries. So we are very happy because it's a, we have a, a really huge group um, working. Um, today we are having the third edition of the Young Scientist Forum. This was an idea that uh, we had our first forum in Seoul during the World Lab 2022. This is an idea of Professor Tamplis, the actual president of IGC, and we are carrying with this task, uh, this is what, as I mentioned, the third edition. Yeah. And I am very happy to tell you that this is the largest forum that we we are conducting. Great. We are we have more or less 300 young scientists resistors. Wow. 200 from FUC and 100 from local people. That's great. Local uh, young researchers. Yeah. So we are very very happy with with this edition. Nice. That's why you mentioned this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Energy. yeah because very, of that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, exactly. for sure it will be a positive energy. Uh, uh, there is a, a lot of activities from young scientists, which is great from the uh, IFCC to, 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 to see the young scientists doing these different activities. And we know more about these uh, activities. Sure. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, how do we create the activities or how do we design these? First, we do surveys to young scientists to know what are their needs, to, to try to see uh, what is the young scientist needing to, to get a better training. And once we have the results, and uh, believe me that every young scientist have the same needs all around the world, no matter what country you come from. So maybe we have specific needs, but usually the, 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 thing, the, the needs are more, more common. Um, we have one of our programs that is called the Professional Scientific Exchange Program. Nice. Uh, this uh, exchange program 
will enable young scientists to travel abroad to not, not, not necessarily abroad, you can travel to a local laboratory as well or any other city of your country, but usually young scientists travel abroad to another laboratory. And FCC, uh, if your program, if your project is approved, today would cover up to three months Please. expenses. Expenses they would cover your travel ex uh, cost, and also uh, up to one thousand five hundred Swiss francs per month. Wow! So this yeah. money will enable get support for today. Of course, with this money you can have the your accommodation, the food to to visit another country. Uh, there is a list of coast laboratories on FCC that they provide this because many times young Chinese want to travel or to do a specific training, but they don't know where to go. To In the US. Is it to do some kind of research or uh, just a kind of training approved from the group of types? Well, there are different goals. You can do it for a research project, for example, if you are needing a technology or a method that is not available in your laboratory. So this would be one of the reasons that IDC will approve in your project. So uh, they will uh, say yes, okay, you can go to, to this um, exchange program. Also, uh, it's not necessary for a research project. For example, if you are, if you are in, in, your, in your laboratory and you want to bring a new technology or a new method that is not available, uh, this is also a reason that you may get the approval from IDC. So you can go to another laboratory, get the training, but you have the obligation that to go back to your laboratory and execute all the training that you received from another laboratory. Yeah. So That's this true. is really good because uh, we are collaborating and we we, we like to use the word networking a lot. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, I see that from the activity and uh, you give a great also presentation about uh, young scientists, uh, the activities there. Um, the workshop, some kind of leader workshop and different kind of workshop. Can we know more about this workshop? Yes, of course. We actually the workshop we are um, having the fourth edition of the leadership workshop. This is in Latin America. We are working together with seniors of IFCC to maybe next year we will be available to to have a leadership workshop for all IFCC. This is the limitation with the time zones. With a leadership workshop, usually we like to do it uh, in person, of course, but we know that it's not completely possible to do this. So we like to have maybe Zoom meetings when everybody is connected at the same time because we have, for a leadership workshop, you need a lot of interaction. Yeah. This is crucial to have a, a good course. So we started with Latin America in Conagiocli, and now we are planning to uh, bring it to all IFCC. Yeah. But anyway, this is not a, a, an exclusive uh, program for Latin America. If you're from another country, you, you can also join. Um, we have many other projects as well. We have a web page that is called Lab Surfing. Uh, this is also a tool that we created to make exchange programs easier. Yeah, this, this web page will let you find young scientists all around the world. Maybe nice. you want to go and so you want to go to Italy, so you search in the, this website, Young Scientists in Italy, and you will have a lot of results from Young Scientists right. that are registered to the web page. And then getting support also? No, no, this is just to make the contact. The, the contact to facilitate? Uh, yes, yes. Nice. The, once you make the contact, you can uh, ask for information, exactly. you can ask for, uh, nice. other, it's not obligatory, but you can also nice. ask someone to host you or to make a city tour, to show you around the city. Great, yeah. Um, how do you see the IFCC support for young scientists? Well, this is the best, uh, the best thing on the group. And the Young Scientist Task Force, uh, as I told you, was created in 2010 with the support of Brian Vista, the, the professor of Vista. He was the person that had received that moment. And through the years, uh, all the persons that came to IFCC, they continue supporting uh, the, the task force. And I think that I am I am correct if I'm saying that every year we have more and more support from IFCC. Nice. Um, I know I, I, that from the beginning that IFCC had the clear idea that young scientists are the future of laboratory medicine. We can discuss this if we are the future or if we are maybe the present. We can see something philosophically to, to discuss, but I mean, young scientists have to make sure that we have a growing and significant population Great. nowadays to become the leaders of tomorrow. I was saying today in the in the inauguration of the session that uh, hopefully one of the 
participants that are attending today to the forum will we'll become be IFC president in maybe 20 or 30 years. So yeah. yeah. We, are, we are creating the, the new leaders. Yeah, creating the leaders of the um, uh, lab and clinical chemistry, um, uh, which is something uh, great. Thanks for your effort in uh, young scientists and uh, um, wishing the best in the future. And the, at the end of this interview, it is a channel also from um, uh, IFCC uh, Young Scientists. Can we know more about uh, this channel? Yes, of course. Uh, we have a program that is called Clinical Case Discussions. So we send a link to young scientists from all around the world to submit their clinical cases. And we, have, we are going to give the chance to all the, the post, to all the abstracts that we receive to present uh, in an online meeting. It's Great. once a month. And so we select the post, the abstracts. We sort them by a specific by speciality. It's, so we have the session with the without the post to abstracts that are related right. topics. And these young scientists have the chance to present their, their clinical case. We, nice. we have a structure with yeah. case discussion. And afterwards, we this is uh, recorded. So after we upload this the YouTube. to the YouTube yeah. that you we had. We also yeah. have other social media. We nice. have Instagram. We have LinkedIn. Do you think our interview will be in this uh, channel? Also? Sure. sure. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Uh, so thanks very much from uh, Saudi Society uh, for Chemical Chemistry. Our uh, podcast with you, uh, Mr. Uh, San Diego Farstaha. Um, uh, from your team. Uh, thanks very much for uh, this time. Well, thanks again to you. It is a pleasure for me to be here and especially to bring this message to young scientists that are listening. So thank you very much. And then for the leaders of the future in, in the lab and the clinical chemistry, the uh, young scientists, wishing the best for uh, you all. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Well, well, well.